Welcome to Korea Report, where we cover Korea's culture, business, and technology. I'm Youngkyu Kim in Seoul. On this special edition, we bring you highlights of this year's annual meeting of the World Economic Forum held in Davos, Switzerland, earlier this year. And we are going to make our country great again. In the United States, President Donald J. Trump takes office, promising to put America first. In Britain, Prime Minister Theresa May decides to take the hard Brexit route. Putting nationalism at the forefront, Russia and President Vladimir Putin's policies are more aggressive than ever. And Prime Minister Shinzo Abe continues to walk along the radical conservative track in Japan. Strong populist and protectionist sentiments are gaining influence around the globe. The problems of unemployment and low growth are still dogging many nations. In such a turbulent period in history, how should world leaders prepare and plan for the future? This year, international leaders joined the 47th World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland on January 17th to debate and discuss this problem together. In the face of such dynamic and turbulent times, most of them seemed worried about 2017. The United States and England used to lead globalization and free trade in the past, but now they are in the opposite position. Feels like an earthquake has erupted, an economic earthquake. Mm. Externally, Trump administration's new policies are being announced, and China is economically pressuring South Korea due to THAAD. But due to total leadership vacuum, Korea is unable to take any action. And we have a political crisis because no major politician seems to have a vision of a good society. We fall into temptation of, pop, of uh, protectionism, if we follow protectionist policies, then it could be a disaster. Uh, you know, a, a trade war between, let's say, the U.S. and China could result in a recession for both countries. That would not be a good thing, obviously. Since 1971, the World Economic Forum has engaged in conversations around political and economic issues that the world is facing. The headline is responsive and responsible uh, leadership. What does that mean? Responsive means that you have to listen. It means that you have to listen to the people that you don't necessarily agree with and you have to try and understand what they're saying. So if you see the world in 2016, I think one thing is pretty clear. So the world is facing a lot of challenges and uh, the people need uh, some answers to their most pressing questions and they need the answers uh, from leaders, and they need good leadership to maneuvering through all the challenges. And therefore, we have chosen this title, Responsive and Responsible Leadership. With protectionism and populism gaining influence around the world, WEF decided that it was important for world leaders to talk to share about responsive and responsible leadership. Davos attendees agreed that a new type of leadership is required because people feel confused and frustrated about increased uncertainty. The committee members of the World Economic Forum seem to define responsive and responsible leadership as leadership that responds quickly to a dynamic global environment and has a sense of responsibility when providing alternative resolutions to problems. The new leadership, I would say, uh, need to be able to capture uh, the dynamic changes that exist in this world. And as we go through the, through the rest of the future, uh, I, I think even we will discover there's going to be more and more challenges. And hence, the new leadership uh, in, in the current world needs to be able to capture and have a, a vision uh, of how to handle this uh, dynamic changes uh, in the world. The meaning is that we should answer to the question of the people 
uh, quite fast, but always at the same time responsible. So it's not the pure answer, which is interesting, but the good answer. That is what we would like to facilitate, and that is our understanding of responsive and responsible leadership. To discuss these topics, WF welcomed more than 3,000 world leaders, including CEOs, entrepreneurs, and celebrities. The attendees discussed ways to approach a changing business environment affected by growing populism, wealth inequality, global warming, and the development of artificial intelligence. This year, while regular attendees such as German Chancellor Angela Merkel were absent, Xi Jinping became the first Chinese president to attend WEF. Hundreds of Chinese delegates and journalists flocked to Davos. So we are delighted to welcome the president of People's Republic of China, the second largest economy in the world. And his participation is a statement in itself. Look, many other countries discussing to go more regional or to go more national. But having now the second largest economy here represented in Davos on the highest possible level, it's a strong statement for globalization, in favor of globalization. President Xi won global attention for the speech he delivered, in which he emphasized Chinese leadership in the world and gave a spirited defense of globalization. A stark contrast from the more inward-looking approach of President Trump. And while he acknowledged that globalization is not perfect and has created problems, he argued that's no reason to write it off completely. Closing off economies will run counter to the historical trend, he said. No one will emerge as a winner in a trade war. It's important to pursue economic globalization, and the benefits should be shared by all nations and people. This year's World Economic Forum in Davos paid considerable attention on the leadership role in the seismic shift of the fourth industrial revolution. How can Korean leaders set an agenda for a prosperous and inclusive future? We'll find out after this break. There is another reason why Davos organizers chose responsive and responsible leadership as this year's topic. With the fourth industrial revolution rising, international leaders need to establish a new world order. Last year, when the forum first raised questions around the fourth industrial revolution, participants forecasted that artificial intelligence the Internet of Things and VR would shake up the future of mankind. We feel we are not yet prepared sufficiently for this fourth industrial revolution, which will come over us like a tsunami, which will change whole systems. Their prediction was exactly right. The fourth industrial revolution wave washed over the planet changing our lives in a big way. The fourth industrial revolution was the main theme last year, and it's been already a year. Most of the participants agree on its fast growth in our life. When professional Go player Lee Sedor went head-to-head -head with Google's artificial intelligence program AlphaGo and lost, 
the world went through an AlphaGo shock. Artificial intelligence learns to keep developing itself and continues to score decisive victories against human Go players. IBM's robot Dr. Watson is known for 90% accuracy on cancer diagnosis. According to Korea Employment Information Service, artificial intelligence is expected to replace 54.8% of human doctors by 2025 at this pace. AR and VR technology are quickly becoming a big hit around many industries. The Pokemon Go game took advantage of AR and was a huge hit last year. Internet of Things related technologies are accelerating human to human connections as well as human to tech connections. We have created a world wherein tech is ubiquitous thanks to the proliferation of mobile devices, smart homes, smart cars, and smart cities. Participants at Davos explained that this year's topic, responsive and responsible leadership, is an extended discussion of the fourth industrial revolution. One of the things I see every day is that technology has changed everything about how we live, how we work, how we interact. And I think we are at the very beginning of the change that technology will, uh, will um, impact the world. And um, if you think about it, technology is now disrupting every single industry and every single job. And my view is the pace of change is only going to accelerate. I would say the new leadership uh, in, the, in the new world, where we are faced with uh, quite a dynamic change in a lot of the situations. So for example, about, you know, we are entering to the fourth industrial uh, revolution. Uh, there is obviously this issue about uh, the gap between the opportunities and which has created the rise of populism. The new leadership, I would say, uh, need to be able to capture uh, the dynamic changes that exist in this world. WEF organizers planned more than 400 sessions for this year's forum, more than half of which were related to the fourth industrial revolution. In the case of Korea, Jeju Island represents a leading force of the fourth industrial revolution. Its electronic system was introduced at the forum this year. Jeju Governor Won Hee-ryong was invited to Davos to speak about the island's plans to go carbon-free by 2030. It's aiming to produce 100% renewable energy by that year and replace 400,000 cars with electric vehicles. Jeju Island is small but it can be an independent trial area from the peninsula as a test bed. Jeju can install an intelligent electrical grid that connects home, city, and cars. Even electronic vehicles will become autonomous driving vehicles, which will play a leading role in the fourth industrial revolution. According to an announcement at WEF in Davos, the economic and social value of the fourth industrial revolution is almost unimaginable. By 2025, this new wave will generate $10 trillion in the consumer sector, $3.9 trillion in logistics, $3.8 trillion in automobiles, and $3.1 trillion in electrical energy. The successful digital transformation in 10 industries will have an economic impact of more than $100 trillion. On the other hand, concerns remain that this new industrial revolution will threaten employment. But World Economic Forum analysts expect the creation of new jobs will make up for the ones that disappear. By 2025, hydrogen cars in the field of renewable energy will provide 3 million new jobs and logistics to offer 2.2 million other jobs. I would be always optimistic that new technologies will, yes, change the face of the jobs. Maybe some jobs will get lost in the future, but at the same time, we will see new jobs. And uh, it's on us to create these new jobs, to find the right way 
to bring us together, people, human being, and technology. The fourth industrial revolution and its entailing uncertainty is now an inevitable reality. So is Korea prepared to welcome this new era? I believe that Korean people are well aware of fourth industrial revolution, such as artificial intelligence. So I think it's an opportunity for Korea to make the best out of it by using outstanding talents in science and technology fields. If we have competitive strength, big economies such as US, China and Europe will need us for trading and investing. We expect some trickle-down effect as a whole. According to WEF research, Korea came 25th in terms of its level of preparation for the fourth industrial revolution, meaning the country is a latecomer in the face of this changing technology, even though it is considered an ICT powerhouse. Korea needs systematic preparation and effort to tackle this shifting industrial paradigm. Yet the greatest challenge is the complex domestic situation. Korea's political and economic leadership is at a crossroad. Will Korea be able to find its own version of responsive and responsible leadership that could help forge a new order in the country? Don't go away. We'll be right back. Challenges and hardships are lying before the Korean economy as it faces strong headwinds at home and abroad at the same time. Will Korea find a leadership that can pull itself out of crisis? Choi Soon-sil 씨는 과거 제가 어려움을 겪을 때 도와준 인연으로 도움을 받은 적이 있습니다. 대통령 박근혜 탄핵 소추안은 가결되었음을 선포합니다. Korea is going through unprecedented political upheaval. The Constitutional Court is considering a motion by the National Assembly to impeach President Park Geun-hye. Her approval rating, once 60 percent, has fallen into the single digits amid a corruption and influence peddling scandal. Tens of thousands of people held candlelight protests demanding Park step down. During the demonstrations, Koreans complained about their government's incompetence and about its lack of communication and transparency. They hope new leadership will bring about the change they crave. The impeachment process has created a political vacuum. The prime minister is the acting president. It's uncertain if the Constitutional Court will uphold Park's impeachment. And so Korea is facing a leadership crisis at a time when governments and businesses around the world are emphasizing the importance of responsive and responsible leadership. Many experts worry these turbulent times will hurt the Korean economy overall if they continue for much longer. <laughs> It's like a boat is floating in the sea and the tides are getting stronger and the boat is broken and there is not even a captain. That's what Korean economy is like right now. Global tensions are rising in response to the protectionist stance of the new Trump administration and the populist forces in Europe. These economic uncertainties have helped keep the Korean consumer market in decline for many months. 뭐 글로벌 경기가 획기적으로 나아질 거
global economy doesn't seem to get better dramatically. We carefully forecast that the global economy is going to get a bit better, but the international protectionist movement seems to slow down. Declining consumer spending leads to decline in corporate spending, which could also lead to unemployment and decrease in household spending. It's this vicious cycle that we have to be alert about. But not everyone is pessimistic. At WEF in Davos, many experts were very optimistic about Korea's future. They praised the candlelight protest movement as an example of healthy citizenship. Experts believe the current situation will have a positive impact on developing Korean society in the long run. Uh, corruption occurs in many, many countries in many, many different forms. Uh, and I think it's uh, been a good thing that uh, uh, the press and the, the gov uh, uh, opposition has been able to uncover uh, these instances of, of corruption. But I think long term, Korea is in a very strong position, has a strong economy. Yes, the currency will, uh, is a bit of a problem, but I, I don't view it as a fundamental long term problem. It's a short-term problem. So I think medium to long-term, I'm quite positive on, on South Korea. But what we have seen is a major change in Korean, South Korean politics due to the movement, literally, of millions of people with the candles in their hand. So I think that's the best proof that everyone you know, has his own life in his or her own hand and that they can have impact if they are working together. And that was a great cooperation. So I'm optimistic in terms of uh, South Korea. When the impeachment process is over, Korea will likely hold presidential election so voters can choose a new leader. Candidates have already been campaigning in a race that continues to grab attention. Many hope new leadership will help the Korean economy overcome the uncertainties it faces. What happens in Korea matters to the world, and Koreans sh should understand that. I know a lot of young people understand the need to change the system. That leadership has to come from people in their 20s and 30s who must stand up and say, look, let's organize, let's really put whatever differences we have aside Let's organize and realize that we need better structures, better processes, and a sense that we need to reduce the inequalities of our society, and they're major, and the insecurities of people in the precariat. With a mid-long-term view, the government should think of policies that can continue for more than one regime. In that way, uh, this year's presidential election is very important in many ways. The World Economic Forum in Davos ended after four days of government and business leaders debating over the meaning of responsive and responsible leadership. It has left us with one more unanswered question, though. In an era when the traditional system is morphing into the fourth industrial revolution, what is the kind of leadership we need? And this is the time to speak out when you see something that you do not agree with and something that is not true to your core values. Um, I think that um, it is not the time to stay quiet. It is not the time to hope that things will change. It is the time to, to push so that things do change and the world that you believe in and the values that you believe in stay and are not uh, overridden by another language that, that you do not subscribe to. We need to change the entire governance after introspection. We should rearrange the entire system and then provide fit human resource according to the system. I think we need leadership that's, that does not back away from or does not abandon globalization, but understands that globalization creates a lot of people or, or leaves behind, I should say, a lot of people in the global economy. And so whoever the new leaders are, have to be sure that they put in place policies that will help the people left behind. We call the present 
the era of uncertainty, because we are going through something no one has gone through before, the fourth industrial revolution. Everything is uncertain, except one thing. What this new era needs is not old leadership, but a new kind of leadership that will create a new order and system. And that'll do for this edition of Korea Report. Thank you for being with us. I'll see you again next time.